Hello everybody, my name is Lovey Yixiao. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about Smith's normal form and homology computation. For a triangulated topological space, we can always find the, its corresponding chain complex where the chain groups are connected by the boundary homomorphisms and the piece homology group is a quotient group defined as the piece cycle group modulo the piece boundary group. Because the, the chain groups are free abelian, therefore the group operation is additive. So we have rank of HP equals rank of CP minus rank of BP, which is essentially calculating the number of cycles that is not a boundary. And as we can see here, CP is in the kernel of the piece boundary operator. So we have rank of CP equals the dimension of the null space for the piece boundary operator. And for the group BP, it is in the image of the P plus one's boundary operator. Oops. P plus one's boundary operator. So we have a uh, rank of BP equals the dimension of the range space for the P plus one's boundary operator. And in this tutorial, I'm going to um, talk about the way to write out the boundary matrix for a boundary operator and the process of reduce the boundary matrix to its smith normal form, where we can find information about the cycle groups and the boundary groups for homology computation. Here, given a simplicial complex like this, we only have two non-trivial chain groups, C0 and C1. For the chain group C0, it contains the zero simplices, which are the five verti uh, vertices. And uh, for the chain group C1, it contains one simplices, which are the four edges. Now let us focus on the boundary operator over here. If we apply this boundary operator on edge E1, we get final minus initial, so V2 minus E1, um, V2 minus V1. If we apply the boundary operator here, we get V4 minus V3. And here we get V5 minus V4. If we apply the boundary operator on E4, we get V5 minus V3. Then we can turn this relation into a boundary matrix M1, where the columns represent the generators for group C1 and uh, the rows represent um, the generators for group C0. And the way to convert it to the boundary matrix is that, for example, here the first equation will become the first column and the second equation becomes the second column and so on. Then we can start to reduce this boundary matrix to its smith normal form. But before we do that, let's take a look at the theorem. So for any m by n matrix of integer coefficient with the following elementary operations, multiply a column by minus one, exchanging two columns, or add an integer multiple of a column to another one, and similarly with the rows. So with this six elementary operation, a boundary matrix could always be reduced to the Smith normal form denoted by m tilde. And in the Smith normal form, all the non zero entries are on the diagonal. And this B1, B2 up to BK all have values greater than or equal to 1. And they satisfy the relation that B1 divides B2 divides up to BK. Now let's try to apply the matrix reduction steps on our boundary matrix. So the first thing we are going to do is to find the greatest common divisor for all the entries. And in our case, the greatest common divisor was 1. So we put 1 in the first pivot position. And because in a Smith normal form, all the off diagonal entries should be 0. So we need some further operations to help us clear out the entry values in the same column and same row. Then we will repeat um, the similar steps for the submatrix. So we find the greatest common divisor for these 12 entries, which in our case, it's still one. And uh, we get, get to put one in the second pivot position. 
and do some further operations to zero out the actual values in the same column and same row. And then we will repeat uh, the steps for the smaller submatrix over here. The greatest common divisor for the six entry values are still one. So here we have one in the third pivot position and then do some further operations to clear out the actual values in the same column and same row. Now I'm one tilde is in the Smith normal form. Um, here that M1 and M1 tilde are connected by a sequence of elementary operations. So we can write it in a more concise form over here. So here M is our original boundary matrix and here's our M1 tilde in Smith's normal form. So the matrix Q inverse summarizes all the row operations we perform in the above matrix reduction steps. And uh, the matrix P uh, summarizes all the column operations in the matrix reduction step. Um, both P and Q are actually change of basis matrix. For example, P is a change of basis matrix for the group C1, and it takes a basis from here to the new basis here. And the way to see it was that for example, the third column in the matrix P is 0, 1, 1, 0, and uh, this corresponds to the new basis vector here, E2 plus E3. And uh, the fourth column was 0, minus 1, minus 1, 1, and this means that the basis vector for our fourth column will be E4 minus E3 minus E2. And similarly, um, Q is a change of basis vector for group C0. And the way to see it is that here, the first column, um, it implies that the first basis vector over here will be V2 minus V1. And the second column implies that uh, the second basis vector will be V4 minus V3, and so on. So um, what does this mean? Well, the most important thing in this tutorial is that um, even though um, the boundary matrix M1 and its Smith normal form M1 tilde are two different matrices, they actually represent the same boundary operator. And the way to see it is that, for example, we apply the boundary operation on H E1, we get V2 minus V1. And then here again, we apply the boundary operator and we still get V2 minus V1. So by reduce the boundary matrix to its Smith normal form, it's actually a way to tell the computer that, hey, um, look at here, there was one column of zeros, mm, and uh, therefore the null space for this matrix is, uh, uh, it, it have dimension one. So the null space for this matrix is here. So it means rank of C1 have uh, uh, rank of C1 is equal to one, and then its corresponding basis was the basis for the first cycle group, which is E4 minus E3 minus E2. So we can check here, E4 minus E3 minus E2, the cycle here. Hmm. We draw here in a pretty way. E4 minus E3 minus E2. There we go. Um, and then for, uh, for the range space, the range space of this operator shows, shows something about uh, the group B0. So the dimension of the range space for this boundary operator is three. So we have rank of B0 equals three. And now we can take a look um, at the boundary op uh, at the zeros boundary operator. Um, what this boundary operator do was that it maps all the simplices to zero. So uh, it means everything in the chain group C zero is actually in the kernel. 
So we have C0 equals C0, which means that the rank for the zero cycle group is equal to five. And for the boundary for the second boundary operator, because we don't have any any two-dimensional simplices, um, therefore it maps zero to zero and uh, mm, the rank of D1 is equal to the dimension of the range space for the second boundary operator, which is again zero. And now we can start to calculate uh, the Betty numbers. So we have Betty zero equals uh, rank zero minus uh, rank D zero minus rank D zero. So we have five minus three equals two, which means there are two connected components. And the Betty one equals rank rank of C1 minus rank of B1, which was one minus uh, zero, which is one. Uh, this means that we have one cycle. And for Betty two, we have rank of C2 minus rank of B2, because we don't have any uh, simplices of dimension two or higher. Mm, so all the so it will be equal to zero. And uh, similarly for all the higher dimensional homology groups, um, because we don't have any higher dimensional synthesis, all the higher homo high dimensional homology groups will be trivial. Therefore, the Betty, uh, the Betty numbers will be zero. And uh, um, this is the end of the tutorial. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you are interested in more information about this normal form, please check the link below the video. See you.